Hey guys, welcome to a video on TraderVix 2B reversal trading strategy. I'm going to show you how I implement a variation of this in my own trading. If you're familiar with Charles Harris's upside reversal or a Wyckoff spring, it's not too dissimilar to those. In essence, I'm looking for a very strong stock in the market, so I'm going to be teaching you about relative strength, and I'm looking for that stock to be building a continuation base. So that could be a volatility contraction pattern, it could be a flag, a pennant, a wedge, a Darvis box, all of that good stuff, right? But I'm not looking to buy the breakout I'm looking to buy much lower within the base formation and this is where the concept of reversals and shakeouts comes into play I'm going to take you through some data as well in terms of specific candlesticks that I'm then looking for so the encyclopedia of candlestick charts which is this book here is probably one of the biggest books ever written on trading certainly Japanese candlesticks something like 900 pages long so I'm going to take you through some data in that book for specific candlesticks that I am looking for and I refer to them a little bit differently as well well, I'm then going to bring in moving averages as well. So there's certain key moving averages that I would like to see the shakeout and reversal type candle six happening on around base lows too. So I think it's going to be a very, very thorough video indeed. Before we get in, get on into it, MarketSmith are today's video sponsor. There is a, a discounted trial available in the comments below. So here we go. Now, don't worry, the first slide is very text heavy, but I'm not actually going to read it to you. I'm just going to explain the principles. I will summarize it, and then you'll see we'll start getting into lots and lots of charts and lots and lots of examples for me to explain it and teach you everything I know about reversals towards the lows of basis. So let's go, go gadget. So a 2B long, I'm going to show you two examples of 2B longs, then one 2B short as well. Then we're going to start bringing in the candle six then we're going to get into a lot of charts don't worry so you can pause the video if you want and read all of this i'm basically going to summarize it for you so a to be long in essence you can get these occurring on a short term time frame an intermediate term time frame and a longer term time frame as well in terms of where the low was set and then where the low is tested so this would be more of an intermediate term low that is then tested so you can see let's just call this a stock here the stock is in the context of a downtrend it sets a low here at a hundred dollars it bounces and then it comes back down and test that low now you can see here i'm using opening high low close so you can see here that price opens down here has a low here and then trades back up through and has a strong close so this is then a spring a shakeout a reversal type candlestick hence the nature of a 2b long a reversal so price is then coming back down it undercuts that level reclaims it and then off it goes nice rally right so how does trader vic say to trade these in his book well what he's saying is what you're looking for is for the low to be set and our imaginary low over here is going to be $100. So as price intraday moves through that low, when it comes back up through, that is then the entry price. And he would use a buy stop order to buy it. And then once the entry goes into the market, when the order is filled, then he's placing a stop loss underneath the low of the day. So his expectation then is the low of this bar over here should not be taken out. Price to just trade back up through and rally. Now this here would be a very strong reversal candlestick. And I'm going to be teaching you all about candlesticks. But Trader Vic is using a defined low on either a short term an intermediate term or a longer term basis is looking for price to trade through that low and then as it rallies back that there would then be the entry let me show you another example so here you kind of have like a wedge type pattern here so we're falling down here we have multiple touches of the trend line and here 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 plenty of touches of the trend line and again we're just going to use a hundred dollars as our low so price is going down on this stock let's just imagine it's stock so price is falling it then rallies it falls it rallies okay it can't get up can't get up volatility starts to contract somewhere in here price then actually gaps down it opens here as i've indicated it then puts in a low here reverses and closes pretty strong so again in terms of a 2b long when price undercuts and then comes back up through the low here being a hundred dollars that's where it's bought on a buy stop so it's bought on stop and then putting a stop loss underneath the low of that bar and we'll talk about risk a little bit a little bit later on now i'll also just i'll read this out to you because i think this is actually quite important and links into how i I implement this and think about this in terms of leading stocks and shakeouts as well so why do 2b reversals occur so traders often use stops to limit their losses because locals are in the pit every day the good ones develop a sense for how the world trades in particular where people set stops on their trades aware of these stop points the locals as well as the brokers who trade on their own account have a vested interest in driving prices slightly above or below these resistance or support points to force execution of the stop loss orders some people would call this a tree shake or a shakeout this is called taking out the stops 
does what it says on the tin, right? After the stops are executed, the market will readjust. This is exactly what happens in the case of two Bs in this typical action in all markets. So this is then something as we then start looking for charts, keep this in the back of your head. I kind of see it as an indication that large operators are in there supporting the stock. And then this line in the sand, also as Trader Vic says, like here, the, the lower this bar then should not be taken out. Like this bar here has been supported by the smarter money in within within the market. Like this, the lower this bar, it shouldn't then be taken out. So this is then what I'd look for. And then in terms of specific candlesticks as well, around lows of what I think are developing continuation bases, we could bring in moving averages such as bounces off the 21 day EMA and all of that good stuff that we'll get to, but we're just layering it at the minute, okay? We're just layering. So this would be a short as well, okay? So if you think about short here, so let's say this stock here, it rallies and it puts in a high of $100. We're using $100 basically on all of these examples. So it puts in a high of $100 and then reverses quite slip, quite swiftly down. This is also known as an up thrust in the Wyckoff methodology. So see how it falls down here. Okay, then it rallies here. So it actually gaps up above that level. So it goes through, it gaps up above that level. Then as it comes back down through the high of $100, that's where it would then initiate. That's where Trader Vic would then initiate a short. And where does the stop loss go? The stop loss goes at the high of that bar because the whole reason for being in the trade is this is going to be an up for us price should then fall back down here if it takes out the high i'm wrong on the trade that's where i want to get out so similar to obviously the long but you're just switching the chart on its head basically you're looking for a resistance level instead of a support level risk management my primary focus is to minimize risk while simultaneously putting enough capital in the right place to make consistent profit what it takes to do this is a prudent system of money management Money management is the art of allocating financial resource and timing entry and exit to and from the marketplace to achieve business goals. A solid approach to money management must consist of three crucial components. A method of assessing risk versus reward, as Trader Vic's doing, he's going, well, if I enter here and I place my stop loss here, do I think that is prudent risk versus reward or a favorable risk versus reward trade? A means with which to determine the probability of success on any given trade. A system of asset allocation. My risk reward criterion is at most... So looking for at least one to three. So I risking one unit to make three units, but ideally bigger than that. But this here, I really like this first sentence. My primary focus is to minimize risk while simultaneously putting enough capital in the right place to make consistent profits. You may have heard me blabber on in recent videos and in a lot of videos about risk mitigation, like free rolling trades, risk mitigation. I think it is very, very, very important. So we're now gonna start bringing in a little bit more so if you're thinking about the long side which is what i am doing in my own trading is when i'm thinking about the longs there's then certain candlesticks that i'm looking for so i'm actually just going to jump ahead one slide and then we'll go back to this slide so you see this bar over here this is a ridiculously ridiculously good example okay you get this hammer type candlestick i also call it a shakeout demand tail. so you get this developing base in here okay this is somewhat of a darvis box i just call it a darvis box okay and then you see this blue line here now this is going to be very 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 important the 21 day EMA, because this is a common area, a vicinity, a region of price where you are going to see these shakeout candlesticks, these gap down reversal bars, I refer to them as well. Charles Harris would call them an upside reversal, Wyckoff would call them a sprint, whatever you want to call them. Basically, a candlestick that indicates there are weak hands being shaken out. You'll commonly see this occur in the leading stocks around their 21 day EMA. For the ridiculously quick momentum stocks, you can see this around the 10 day, which is the black line, and you'll also see it around the 50 day which is the purple line as well but for me in the type of stocks i trade the 21 day ema is going to be most applicable now that's not too dissimilar from say the 20 day simple moving average i just like the 21 day ema because as you're going to see there's lots of some examples where it just works perfectly like that so i'm going to show you some timeless ones right well, I'm going to show you some different examples just to indicate it is bloody timeless, basically. So Kex, this is back in the 1980s, and we've got lots and lots of examples to be going through. Okay, I'll just show you ones, historical ones first. But I then want to go back to the candlesticks on the previous slide here. So this one here, okay, you see how you get this shakeout demand tail. What does price do? Well, first and foremost, it just undercuts its blue line here, the 21-day EMA. So you see there's this little tail here, okay, it just comes down, just undercuts there, which then is a confluence of going underneath the 21 and underneath these base lows, and then it rallies back up and closes on the high and what do you notice about the volume so this black line here is the 30 bar volume average so the 30 day volume average what do you notice about the volume there's not much volume so what does that tell you about supply about selling at these levels there is hardly any. And we've also just knocked out early traders potentially trying to get in this and place their stop losses as Trader Vic was saying in that quote underneath base lows. 
So we've just now had a confluence of shaking out traders who have placed their stop losses underneath base lows, a shakeout underneath the 21, a shakeout that's just perfect in terms of low relative volume under the base lows, indicating there's very little supply selling coming to the market. Then if that creates a favorable reversible trade, which we'll come on to later, that's a ridiculously good setup. So I don't think I'm not then looking to buy it on the breakout here when it's just running up like that there is the entry that there is a ridiculously good entry. So you can see as these lows are developing and I'm kind of pointing to some here, some shakeout bars coming through. And let me just do another one here as well. Here's some good examples. See the shakeout here, see the shakeout here before the stock breaks out. Okay, there's certain bars that I'm looking for to happen around the lows, around these key moving averages as I punch the desk. So these are the ones here. And again, this comes from this big old book here. Okay, 900 and something pages long. It is the encyclopedia of candlestick charts. So there's a couple of candlesticks I'm looking for and I'll talk you through the psychology as well. I think Thomas Pospolsky tested something like 4.7 million Japanese candlesticks in this book. So it's the most thorough study ever done on Japanese candlesticks. So there's a couple of other ones, or there's a couple of ones to be focused on. The belt hold bullish. Okay, this one here. If you think about the psychology of this candlestick, think about it from a supply and demand perspective as well. This candlestick here, what does it do? It opens bang on the low. See that? It opens on the low, pushes up. Here's the high here with this little supply shoot I call this. Some people call it a tail, I just call it a supply shoot and I would call this a demand tail over here. Why? Because supply is coming to the market in this region here and then it has a strong close. So if you think about this, there's a lot of buying going on, right? Price is opening on the low here. So it opens right on the low and then pushes up. There is an immediate presence of demand. There must be because price opens on the low of the day and then just pushes up. There's an immediate presence of demand. So do you think if you're looking for a reversal bar, say around the lows of a base or at a potential support level or at a key moving average, is that quite a good bar to see? I would say so. This is a quote from Boswalski in the book, speaking specifically on the belt hole bullish. A downward retrace of the primary uptrend represents a delicious trading setup. This is a ridiculously good bar. You can see the data here for yourself. I'm not going to read all the data points out. I'll, you can read that. I'll just take you through the psychology. These are ones you'll quite commonly see as well. So as I was just showing you on Kex here, Okay, this here is a hammer type candlestick. I'd also just call them a shakeout demand tail. Why? Because it is a shakeout and it is a demand tail. There is buying here. So again, a lot of the concepts, I just have to put it in my own kind of terminology and vernacular to internalize it and make it stick in my head, basically. So this here, this is a hammer. So what does a hammer candlestick do? Again, think about this from a supply and demand perspective. The open is here, okay? The open is here. Intraday, price goes down to the low here and then buying steps in and then price closes very strong in this instance here on the high of the day. Obviously, the stronger the close in terms of relationship to where is the close in the overall range of the candlestick, the closer the price trades or closes to the high of the day, the better. Better indication of strength. That's very logical when you, when you think about it. It's just indicating there's more demand if prices go out on session highs. But this here can be very good to shake out weak hands, to trigger a low to stop losses, especially if it happens underneath base lows, maybe a little support level as well under a key moving average, such as the 21 day EMA. Another good candlestick to be seeing, right? This one here is called a frosting pattern. So this one here, if you think about it, price is coming down on this day. So the open is here, the high is here, the low of the bar is here and the close is here. It's a bearish bar, right? But what happens on the next bar? Well, price actually gaps down. So the prior close is here, price gaps down, opens here. Now, similar to the belt hole bullish, price gaps down and opens on the low of the day. So in this instance here, it opens on the low of the day and then pushes up. There is an immediate presence of demand. Buyers step in immediately. They must do. Look, the open is the low of the bar. So again, think about bullish and bearish. We were talking about here the strength of the close on the hammer. Think about the strength of the open on this bar here and say on a piercing pattern and above the stomach as well. Where is the open in relation to the range of the candlestick? That can give you an indication of how strong the buyers are. Again, what this is here, as Wyckoff said, it is a study of force between supply and demand. So the open is on the low, pushes up, pretty strong close on this one. Now a piercing pattern, slightly different just because the strength of the candlestick here and where it can close in relation to the prior bar. So what you'd see, what you'd like to see with a piercing pattern is it closes a above halfway of the prior red bar. So it's closing above halfway above the real body here. So similar, open here, close here, low here, high here. What does price do? It gaps down. So imagine if this is gapping down, say underneath the 21 or underneath the 10 or underneath the 50, also takes out some base lows where there may be a lot of stop losses as well. It opens on the low, pushes straight up, strong close, really good to see. Now above the stomach, interesting one, if you think about the psychology of it as well, right? So 
price opens here on the penultimate candlestick, price opens here, closes here, bearish bar, right? So the bears are thinking, okay, we're in control here, we're in control here. What does price do? Well, the very next session or the very next bar gaps up. So it opens on the low and then pushes up pretty strong close. So think about that. Supply is clearly in control here. Okay, the bears are going, we, we've got this, we've got this. Prices are going lower and then the very next session, oh, no, you haven't. Price gaps up, opens here, pushes up. So then this can feed short covering as well because the bears who are potentially shorting here go, oh, oh, oh hang on a minute, I've got to cover. So they're then actually perpetuating and, and kind of filling into the buying that is going on, increasing the amount of demand because they then have to cover as well. So it's interesting when you think about candlesticks, but you don't just see it as, oh, that's nice, it's red, it's green, oh, there's a bit of volume. When you actually start thinking about the psychology of the buy, it's really, really important, I think, to have the context of what is it you are looking at and then link the candle six back to psychology of supply and demand and understand it is market participants that are creating these candle six. So let's start going through some examples. So we looked at Kex. Let's go through a couple of other ones. And what I would say is while I'm showing you these charts, pay very close attention because these are leading stocks. How do you know they're leading stocks? Look at all the 52 week highs coming from the relative strength line. Okay. Free tool, search my name on TradingView and you will find it. So you can see the blue dots. Okay. This indicates there is a 52 week high on the relative strength line. I love trading stocks hitting 52 week highs. Why? Because it's indicating they are a leading stock. But what I want you to do as well is, yes, there's some wiggles and jiggles, aren't there? The stock, clearly, the primary trend is up. You can see that. The moving averages are all sloping up like this. Generally speaking, price is making a series of higher highs, higher lows, higher highs, higher lows, definition of an uptrend, right? But when price is pulling back and you see the lows coming in, just notice, where is the stock generally finding supportive action? Do you see anything that just repeats, i.e. prices finding supporting action around, again, vicinities, areas, regions on the 21, the 21, the 21, the 50, the 50, the 10, 21, and the 50 in here. Oh, bounces off the 10, isn't it? Isn't that interesting? So again, it's then trying to understand and get a feel for, okay, leading stocks, how do they move? Where may they find supporting action? And then do you see supporting action? And then does that lead to potentially a favorable risk to reward trading opportunity for you? Make sense? So these ones over here, before the stock, this is a cup with a low handle, maybe sets of VCP as well. You have one contraction, two contraction, three contraction. See how you get this shakeout demand tail, this hammer. So if I just go back, look at this bar here, okay? Look at this bar. Doesn't it look exactly like this bar? Hammer, and it also goes out on session highs, closes on the high. Look at this hit, see? Hammer undercuts these last four days, undercuts these lows, goes out on the high of the bar. So think about the strength. Look at the volume. There's not much volume. It's below the 30 bar average. What's that telling you about supply? There's very little supply coming to the market. There's very little selling at this level. Then it just creates this nice pivot in here as well. And you also get a 52 week high while the stock is still within the base. So a little side point here about thinking about relative strength. If a stock hits a 52 week high, so on this bar here, the stock is hitting a 52 week high. It's hitting a 52 week high and it's still in the base. The stock is trying to tell you it is extremely strong. Let me just show you a couple other historical examples and I'll read out these four key things to remember for TML type stocks. I'm not talking about biotech stock that's in a phase four downtrend and has a $50 million market cap. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about leading stocks of their day that are hitting 52 week highs and have incredibly strong relative strength lines and ideally mega earnings, mega sales, all of that good stuff, which will come on to fundamentals a little bit later. So four things to remember for true market leaders. Look for supportive action around key moving averages, in particular, the 21 day EMA. Shakeouts on low volume can indicate little supply. So selling is coming to market at those levels. So it's again, where do you see the shakeout given the context of the base as well? Shakeouts that find supportive action on key moving averages and under recent lows and base lows can create excellent opportunities, as I will show you. Base duration of three to four weeks minimum, ideally. So when a stock is basing here, so see you then get this hammer candlestick, see? It's a hammer candlestick, goes out on session highs, bounce off the 21, see how it just basically undercuts these lows here. That for me creates an excellent opportunity, but the base duration is around three to four weeks as well. So like here, for instance, okay, you get like this hammer here, but well, the stock's extended from the 10 day and this is like a, a seven day base. I don't have any interest in that, right? I want to see a proper base. So if you look at this one over here, this is a really good example. So what chart pattern do you see? If you were going from this point here, and if I just draw it like this, so from here to here, what chart pattern do you see? 
cup and handle, right? Now, a little side point as well, that when you get the transition from the cup, so this here, this is the cup, and then the transition into the handle. See this bar here that I'm hovering over? This is called bullish synchronicity. That's what I call it. See how you get a pop in the volume? It's about two, two and a half times the 30 bar average. What does the candlestick do? Think about this from a supply and demand perspective. It opens on the lower the bar and goes out on the higher the bar. There is an immediate presence of demand and there is a lot of demand as well. It goes out on session highs having opened on the lower the bar and then you get the handle so that transition into the handle really 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 good to see now this bar here shake out demand tail bounces perfectly off what key moving average the 50 day interesting and then do you see how it undercuts the lows it undercuts the lows of the handle isn't that interesting and then closes out on session highs and look at the volume pop i would have thought there's a few a fair few stop losses that then get triggered and then off it goes so it's really not uncommon it's actually more common i think to see shakeouts like this hammers gap down reverse bars you could call it a frosting a piercing whatever you want to call it i refer to them as shake out demand tails and gap down reverse bars generally speaking it's not uncommon and in fact i think it's more common to see that before a stock actually breaks out of the base as it's large operators just having one last go to shake out those weak hands i think as well in terms of a belief system if you have a belief system which i do that leaving stocks are trying to go higher with the fewest amount of people on board then actually seeing this seeing these shake out demand tails undercutting lows around key moving averages is actually a very constructive sign why because it's indicating that actually large operators the people you want in there supporting the stock are in there supporting the stock and they're up to their usual games I think it's a really constructive sign to see. So there's a couple that I'll focus on here. So you see this blade here, what would you call it? I would call it a Darvis box and see how the stock starts finding support of action around its 21 date. Then what do you notice? Shake out demand tail, shake out demand tail, shake out demand tail, shake out demand tail, then it goes. Shake them out, shake them out, shake them out, shake them out, shake them out then it goes in here as well this is a wedge type pattern see i was coming back down here look at the lows of the base shake out shake out shake out shake out shake out and then look at this final bar hit really strong close price then pops creates this little low pivots then you get this cup and a little handle here shake out shake out shake out then it goes see what i mean it's just timeless on the lows as well so look at the moving average the stock is respecting generally speaking it's a 21 is it a leading stock did you see the relative strength line down here look over 52 it ties look at the shakeouts coming through SLM, ridiculously, ridiculously good example. So I wasn't trading in 1986, but if I saw this set up here, I would be licking my lips at it. Like this is ridiculously good. Okay, so we know then over here, the stock then builds a cup and then a handle type pattern here. Now, what was I blabbering on about a couple of minutes ago about the transition from the cup to the handle? You would like to see evidence that there's a lot of buying going on. Did you see this bar here and this bar here and these two volume bars? Oh, and did you see the 52 week highs as well? Look at the first bar here, opens on the low, pushes up, largest volume bar you see thus far. Now it's not just, oh, there's a big green volume bar, it's what did price do on the big green volume bar? Opens on the low, closes on the high, really good. Now this bar here opens on the low, pushes up and you get what I call a supply shoot. So there's gonna be trap buyers up here so you get this supply shoot prices trying to come out of the base, but trap buys overhead resistance pushes it back down. Supply comes to the market. Hence why I call it a supply shoot because it's a shoot. Shoots go up and then supply brings it back down. Supply shoot. And then over here, see how the stock then puts in this shakeout demand tail. So it's a hammer. It shakes out underneath. And where does it close? back on the high of the day. So it shakes out, look at the amount of lows, recent lows undercuts as illustrated by this horizontal pink line here. And what do you notice about the volume? There's not much volume. This is a ridiculously good setup. These are the setups I like to look for in terms of the continuation type basis. So I trade it very differently to how Trader Vic says in the book, but I'm looking for these type of bars here. It's kind of the same philosophy in terms of thinking about reversal type bars in terms, but my execution, how I go about doing it is very, very different. So this is, this is then very good if it creates a favorable risk first of all trade, which we'll talk about a little bit later on, but think about the psychology of this bar. It undercuts these recent lows, potential developing base. You've seen a lot of demand coming in. You know it's a leader. Look at the 52 week highs. Look at the 52 low week highs. Look at the persistent nature of this rally. Shake out underneath the 21 as well. Back out on session highs, really good. So for me, how I would then trade, and I've explained this in a lot of recent videos, is here probably free roll it into the base highs, and then here it now creates a pyramiding opportunity because the stock is still within the base, and then you get what I call a trigger bar. So this is a trigger bar, ridiculously tight bar. Look how the volume dries up. There's no supply coming to the market. Oh, and the prior day stock hits a 52 week high while it's still in the base. Extreme, extreme sign of strength. Now this will be split adjusted 101 times, hence why it is less than a dollar hit. But hopefully that's starting to make sense. Let's go through some more recent examples. This should say 2020, not 2023. We've got a lot of examples from 2023, such as Uber, LI, we got um, SoFi, we've got Cam T, we've got Slumberjay, and uh, yeah, we've got a few examples to now be going through. So 
This is a quote here from Trudevik in the book. The fastest and most risk-free way to make money in the markets is to identify a change of trend in a market as early as possible. Take your position, long or short, write the trend, and close your position before or shortly after the trend reverses. Again, any market professional will tell you that is impossible to buy at the lows and sell at the highs or sell at the highs and buy at the lows consistently. But with practice, it is very possible to catch 60 to 80% of intermediate term and long-term market movements. So how I then kind of think about this in my own trading is I'm trying to catch the beginning of the trend as the stock is basing so first and foremost i'm looking for the stock to be basing so this is lululemon here and we're going to talk about these these arrows that i pointed to in these candlesticks okay you get gap down reverse bar shake out demand tail shake out demand tail gap down reverse bar shake out demand tail then you get a really tight pivot over here and you get kind of classic trigger bar action tight inside bars volume dries up as well you know it's a leader look at all the 52 week highs before the base like leading leading stock going on here but when i think about trying to look for the turn in a base. Well, what I'm trying to do here is it's it's pretty darn difficult to buy the stock like down here on this bar. You can see it's actually a gap down reverse bar with a shakeout demand tail. Next bar here opens on the low, pushes up like there's an immediate presence of demand, right? But again, down here, again, this COVID low, so there's a lot of volatility like the, the risk doesn't really make sense here. Of course, that's the most optimal time to buy, but it's, it's not a very kind of optimal time if you think about risk versus reward and you think about consistently being able to do that. I don't think you could consistently do that at all and your stop losses are going to be ridiculously wide. So what I think about more so is a stock in a developing base and then trying to think about the turning point for when the stock basically stops basing and starts going higher. And I think what often will mark the low in a stock that is building a continuation base. So for this instance here, it's more of like a uh, it's kind of more like a cup and a handle of ECP. You could have like one contraction, two contraction, three contraction, four contraction. Over here, right, maybe you could say it's an ascending triangle as well. You could just draw a straight line across the top and it starts building higher lows. So it's on the higher low. So if you think about then the turning point, if I just go forward to the next slide, right? If you think about this bar here, right, this is then the higher low where price then puts in the shakeout demand tail. So it's actually a little gap down underneath the 21, undercuts these lows, there's the shakeout demand tail, and then price starts trending up there afterwards. So for me, this is the very optimal time to be looking for an entry. I also like it when you get these tight consolidations and you get these trigger bars as well, because for me, that's then, the, that's then where the continuation of the trend should happen from. So it's basically looking to identify candlesticks where you think that's gonna be where the continuation of the trend is going to start from. If you think about it in terms of efficiency of trying to compound capital and make money as well well if you're getting in at where you think the start of the new trend is and you're taking a favorable reverse world trade it's quite a good area on the chart to be looking for a setup right so that's what i'm looking for gap down reverse bar shake out demand tails here here's another shake out demand tails here it bounces off the 21 perfectly as well and the volume dries up it's a really 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 good bar and then here you get your classic trigger bars so then it's about kind of planning the trade out so if we were then planning the trade out here you get this really nice, I just call it shake out demand tail, hammer type bar. Look how the volume dries up as well. So I, I target them. I use I use buy stop limit orders predominantly. I've covered that in recent videos. So buy stop limit order, buying it through the high, stop loss just underneath the low of the bar. So doing that and assuming really good execution, the risk on the trade would be 2.58%. Now you need a metric to be judging that. Is that good risk? Is it not good risk? So what I would say is take a look over here at the stock's 20 day ADR percentage. If you want to use 15 day or 29 day or 31, it doesn't really matter. I just use 20 day. It works absolutely perfectly for what I want to use it for. So what I'm basically looking for is for the initial stop loss to be number one less than the ADR percentage, even better, kind of ideal if it's half to two thirds. So if this was 3%, if it was 1.5 to two and a quarter percent, that could look really, really nice indeed. Now what I've done over here is just how I think about stop losses when swing trading on the daily chart. So one to two percent is very tight like that is very tight risk control two to three percent is usually the sweet spot somewhere between initial stop loss of two percent and three percent i think is is a nice sweet spot four to five percent is getting a little bit wider so it must be a great setup on a tml type stock so a true market leader type stock or a momentum leader six to eight percent i think that's wide like, I, I think that's too wide basically for me six to eight percent is very, very, very wide. 10% is just absolutely, utterly ridiculous. It's a terrible setup, basically, uh, to take that much risk. Furthermore, a good setup metric is the initial stop loss, half to two thirds versus the 20 day ADR percentage, as I was just saying over here. So something that is two to three percent is in the sweet spot. Ideally, then it's half to two thirds the ADR percentage as well, because ideally you want to be trading stocks that are quicker than the market. Well, because if you think about it, the triple Qs, usually has an ADR of somewhere between, uh, somewhere around one, around 1.5%. So if the triple Qs goes up 
10%, well, you don't want to be in a stock that has an ADR, so i.e. the quickness of the stock is less than the triple Qs, because if the triple Qs goes up 10%, you don't want to be in a stock that only goes up 10%. You want to be in a stock that has the potential to go up 20%, 30%. So what do you do? Well, you look for stocks with high ADRs. So in that instance there, if the triple Qs has an ADR of 1.5% and it goes up 10%, well, you could kind of deduce that, well, a stock with an ADR of 3% could go up 20% in that instance. If it had an ADR of 4.5%, it could go up 30%. So do you want to be in a stock that could go up 5%, 10%, or 30% in the same time period? Which one do you think you may make more money in, right? Obviously, the quicker moving stock, but it's again, the quicker moving stock, but does the risk make sense as well? Let's do a couple of others as well. There are two important and often overlooked advantages in using charts for making speculative and investment decisions. First, it is easier for most people to think in terms of visual images, certainly is for me. Second, by setting a concrete point of entry and exit according to the charts, you can more easily remain aloof of, from the emotional pressures which are so often confusing, confusing when money is at stake. So this one here is Uber, okay? So it comes out of this big base and we're just gonna touch upon when you see very large relative volume on TML type stocks, so true market leader type stocks, and you get bullish synchronicity on the earnings. So this could be a big gap. It opens near the low, it pushes up strong, and then bases thereafter. So Uber comes out of this big base here, and I'll teach you on the SoFi chart where the ceiling becomes the floor. So where prior resistance then acts as supportive action, as you can see from this black line here. So there's a lot of confluences lining up here. So look at the volume coming through. Look at the 52 week size after. What do you think large operators are doing? Uber trades over a 100 million shares on this day on a $36 stock, pretty much. What do you think large operators do? Does it look like they're distributing positions or does it look like they're accumulating? They're buying hand over fist and then they buy more in subsequent sessions. And then what moving averages do you start to see the stock respect? Well, first bounce is off the 10 and then you get this gap down reversal bar, almost like a belt hold bullish, as I was teaching you earlier, onto the 21. So let's just go and have a look. So this one here, I was targeting it through this bar here and then because it gapped down, I canceled my order and I prematurely can cancel my order uh, in hindsight, but it is what it is, okay? So this is that earnings reaction net, really good earnings reaction. You'll see this for LI in a couple of slides times up, really good earnings reaction and then the stock starts basing. I really, really, really like that. It's like a post earnings base, especially if it reports here it's like just mega earnings coming through, mega sales coming through, maybe margins are increasing as well, maybe there's a new contract or something and there's some really good news out for the for the, for the the uh, stock as well. So it basically builds a Darvis box, right? So this bar here, okay, it's a gap down reversal bar, so it's pretty much a belt hold. Now it doesn't open right on the low, but it's not too far away, and it's a confluence of the 21 day EMA undercutting these base lows here. Volume pops up a little bit. Now I like to use multiple time frame analysis. I'll show you a chart a little bit later of, of AKR to explain a couple of principles as well. But you see here, right? If you were then targeting, so this I was then planning the thread out again, I said I then canceled the order prematurely because it gapped down a little bit, but it gapped down to 21, so I should have been a bit more patient with it actually. But I was targeting it through the high here of 38.05, initial stop loss base just underneath the low there of 37.06. So the initial risk on the trade, assuming perfect execution, about 2.59%. So does the risk make sense relative to the ADR percentage of 2.79%? Yeah, it does, doesn't it? It's in the sweet spot of 2 of two to 3%. Now, could it have been less and been closer to two thirds versus the ADR percentage? Absolutely it could but this is the thing here that you'll see me talk about trigger bar so this here is a trigger bar whereas this is a gap down reverse bar or shakeout demand tail inherently the risk is going to be more on a gap down reverse bar or a shakeout demand tail as opposed to a trigger bar so if i just go back to the lululemon this here is a shakeout demand tail okay this bar here is a shakeout demand tail this bar here is a shakeout demand tail whereas this bar up here is what i call a trigger bar if you watch recent videos you'll know what a trigger bar is this bar here is a trigger bar look how the volume dries up like that's ridiculously good so the risk is going to be inherently less on a trigger bar relative to say a shakeout demand tail or a gap down reversal bar because of the wideness that you would associate with those candlesticks so then you kind of have a decision that okay well do i want to potentially try a trigger bar twice for the same amount of risk as it would be on a gap down reverse bar or a shakeout demand tail. Makes sense. So let's do this one here, LI. So again, similar to Uber, stock breaks out of a phase one base. So if you studied Stan Weinstein's work of stage analysis or Wyckoff and his price cycle, who really came up with the price cycle, is you get a phase four decline into a phase one accumulation base. And then this here is potentially early in a phase two uptrend. Now again, you have really good reaction to the earnings coming through as it breaks out above the highs of these bases. And what does the candlestick do? Well, it gaps up, huge volume coming through, pretty much opens on the low. There's a little, little shakeout demand out and then it pushes up, little 
overall supply chute as well. Uh, okay, kind of supply chute pushes up the next day as well. I think large operators are distributing or accumulating on this bar here. What do you think? Looks like accumulation to me. And then you get this post earning space, which resembles pretty much a Davis box. So then look at this bar here. Shake out to Martel. So hammer candlestick undercuts the lows of the vast majority of bases. If you think where price has been trading here, okay, this bar here, this shake out to Martel undercuts like. 97% of all the trading that's happened in the base, just other than the kind of gap up here, but it basically undercuts the entire of the base lows. Like it's really, 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 I can't explain how good that is. And it bounces off the 21 day EMA. Now we've got to think about the risk. So the risk on this trade is 4.68%. If you're targeting it through the high stop loss, just underneath the low, assuming perfect execution, 4.68% relative to the risk or the ADR percentage is 3.72. Does the risk make sense? What do you think? Well, it's kind of four to five percent. So, OK, it's got to be a very, very, very good setup in a momentum leader um, type stock. Now, LI has very good earnings, very good sales coming through Chinese EV, EV stock. Does the risk make sense? And this is sometimes where you can then see this bar and go, do you know what? Actually, now, now it needs an inside bar. Like now it needs a trigger bar. And for that initial stop loss to come down from like four, four point six, eight percent to like three percent, two and a half percent like then two and a half, three percent. Okay, now we're talking like two thirds versus the ADR percentage. Now we could be looking at something really good. And especially if it's a trigger bar that has very low volume coming through after the shakeup. So sometimes you can see this, see this setup and go, wow, okay, looks really good, but the risk doesn't quite make sense yet so far. So you can see here, phase four, phase one accumulation base, phase two uptrend, the ceiling becomes the floor. This is kind of a technical analysis concept when prior resistance then acts as support basically. So if we just connect the highs of this big old phase one base here, now we start getting a confluence. So we start getting gap down reversal bars and we start getting shig out demand tails testing Okay, the previous resistance now holding a support confluence of the 21 as well and around the base lows. Let's go take a look. So first and foremost, 52 week highs coming through. Now take a look at this bar over here. Okay, shake out tomato. Now, yes, it's red. Would it be even better and a stronger indication if it was green? You're right, it would be because it would indicate that buying is even stronger. Look at the persistent nature of this rally here. It's really good. It's not chopping around. It's not doing this. It's not chopping around. Very, very, very persistent. It's really good to see. Look at the increased volume and sustained volume, 52 cars coming through here is a gap down reversal bar so prior closes up here gaps down opens here closes on the high but did you see the shake out demand tail underneath what moving average 21 day ema interesting price then comes up pulls back down shake out demand tail coming through here now the volume really dries up and the lower this bar undercuts the vast majority of base lows so then if you're thinking about this one well similar to li maybe that okay risk is about five percent okay that's getting to like the high end really the adr is a little bit higher at 4.19 percent but does the risk make sense Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. But these are then the conversations that you have to have with yourself and go, okay, looks really, really interesting here. Um, maybe it just needs like one more tight day, one little more shake out demand tail, and maybe the initial stop is like then 3% instead of 5%, because then that's kind of two thirds versus the ADR percentage as well. Cam T, so this one here. So semiconductor stock that's ridiculously strong. How do you know it's ridiculously strong? Do you see all these blue dots here? Look at all these blue dots here. See how the stock is just staying above its 21. Pulls down, bounces, pulls down, bounces. Look at the bullish synchronicity coming through in here. Gaps up, opens on the low, closes on the high, 52 week high. Look at the volume, about four or five times the 30 bar average, really good. See how the stock then stays above its 10, pulls down, gap down reversal bar onto the 21. So remember those count six. This is a belt hold bullish. And another one, belt hold bullish really good bars to see. Now, does every single bar work like this? Absolutely not. Had you bought this one through the high, you then would have been stopped out here on this little shakeout demand out. And then the next bar, you get this gap down reversal bar. So it gaps down, opens here, closes here. Look at all the 52 highs in the base and it undercuts the base lows. So it undercuts the vast majority of base lows as indicated by this pink line here. But the fact that it gaps down, opens on the low, closes pretty much on the high, immediate presence of demand. Look at the volume. Volume is below the 30 bar average and it's just undercut base lows in the 21. What's that telling you about supply? How much selling is coming to the market? Not that much. So this one here, for instance, 4.66% relative to the ADR of 4%. Does the risk make sense? There's a question that you have to have for yourself. Maybe you think, maybe some of you said, yeah, I think I think the risk makes sense. Anything under 5% is, is pretty good, isn't it? Yeah, maybe it is, maybe it isn't. Depends on how you feel about the stock, the fundamentals, which we'll talk about a little bit later as well. But these are then the conversations to have with yourself that, okay, looks like I found a really strong stock here. Really like this action, but does the risk make sense yet? I don't know if the risk does make sense yet. Maybe it needs another bar. Maybe it doesn't need another bar. And you think, actually, I could go in half size here to reduce the dollar risk that I potentially have if it kind of pops and then puts in, as I showed you an example earlier on, I think it was SM from 1986. 
in terms of then it puts in that shakeout demand tail and then it put in that trigger bar then you pyramid in on the uh, on the trigger bar and start building a position as the stock is basing these are conversations to be having with yourself SLB. So let's now do a quiz, see if you have um, learned anything. So SLB, I took a position in this stock here, still have a position at the time of filming it. So can you identify the six reversal candlesticks in the base? So in the base, I think there are six reversal candlesticks around the 10 day EMA and the 21 day EMA. There are, oh, I'd say there's two shakeout demand tails and I would say there are four gap down reversal bars. So here we go, three, two, one. There you go, there they are. So you get really good. Look at this here. Look at the buying coming through. This ain't retail traders doing this. Okay, this is institutions. Look at the persistently high volume coming through and look at the bullish synchronicity. This bar here opens on the low, closes on the high. Like, what do you think large operators are doing here? Then the stock starts basing. So, okay, great. Now I'm looking for the large operators to play their usual games. Shake out demand tail on the earnings. Shake out demand tail. Gap down reverse bar with a shake out demand tail onto the 21. Gap down reverse bar. Gap down reverse bar that then turns into a bullish engulfing candle. See, another, this one here is then an above the stomach pattern. So do you remember here? Let me go back and show you. Do you remember here? Above the stomach. This one right here. 16,929 in the database, bull market reversal rate 66%, that's ranked 17 out of 103, the frequency rank pretty frequent, 32 out of 103, and the performance rank pretty good, 31 out of 103, right here, if I can find it, that was an anticlimax, wasn't it, right there, so my entry, coming through in here, just like that, above the stomach, candlestick pan. let's do it with WFRD, so this is another one, so I'm position in this one at the time of filming as well. So WFRD, can you find the three reversals within the base? There are two gap down reversal bars and there's one shakeout demand tail, but it's a bit of a clustering of shakeout demand tails actually. So ready? Three, two, one. There you go. So 52 week highs is the stock a leader. It is 52 week highs. Look at the buying coming in, bullish synchronicity. See the respect for the 10, the 10, the 10, and then here. Gap down reversal bar with a shakeout demand tail. Gap down reversal bar onto what key moving average? The 21. Interesting. And then here, shakeout demand tail. There's actually three of them. There's one here, there's one here, and there's one here. But I thought I'd just cluster them all together, basically. But see how it's holding its 21-day EMA. Nice and interesting, right? So let's now look at the one-hour chart. Now, this will hopefully illustrate a point as as well. Thinking about, thinking about supply here, looking around base lows. Because, again, it's the kind of point of this video is... It's not always about, for me, buying the breakout. It's actually, do I think it's a strong stock and it's a developing base? And do I think there's an opportunity to try and get in lower on in the base when I see specific things happen, which I'm taking you through? So it's thinking about what candlestick do you see? What does the volume do? Where is it happening in relation to how the base is forming? What, what is it doing in terms of a key moving average and things like that? So this is AKRO. So clearly a lot of demand moving in for the stock. Then it starts building this flag type pattern over here. But it's these two candlesticks here that I want to draw your attention to. So these two candlesticks are what type of candlesticks? They're hammer type candlesticks, right? Shake out the martels, close on the high. One's red, one is green. So it closes right on the high here. What do you notice about the volume? Appreciate it's a bit hard to see, but you can see the sweet FA in terms of the volume, right? So you've got no volume coming through on these two shakeout demand tails. And where is it happening in relation to the base? Well, this first one here is undercutting the entire base lows. Think about that. It's undercutting the entire base lows, and you've got a shakeout demand tail and hardly any volume. What's that telling you about supply? What's that telling you about selling? There's hardly any. Is that a really constructive bar to see? It's a very, very, very constructive bar to see. And this principle for me is the same whether it is the one hour chart the daily chart the weekly chart this going down to base lows in a developing base and a strong stock and then you see the shake out demand tail undercutting base lows and no volume could be a gap down reverse bar as well no volume no selling really good to see then there's another one here then it puts in a high low and this is more of your classic like pivot area see the tightness in price here price and clustering i really like it on the one hour chart when you get price clustering around the 10 21 and the 50 and look there's no volume i know it's hard to see but there's no volume there's no volume, tightness and price. There's no supply coming to the market. So it's the same principle here in the pivot area that tightness and price, low volume, very little selling. Down here, check out demand tail, undercutting base lows, very low volume, no selling, no supply. It's really, 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 really good to um, to see. So I'm going to take you through relative strength. There's a couple of quotes from the, um, from the book, and I've put in a couple of my own charts just to help illustrate the point. So there is another way of looking at relative strength that related directly to my de definition of a trend. I'm going to teach you how Trader Vic uh, talks about trend. I'm then going to take you through how you can quickly screen for these type of stocks as well. Recall that when the market is in an uptrend, it makes a series of higher lows and higher highs. So what I do is looking at the industrial average. So this book was written, I think, back in the 1980s. 
80s or so looking at the industrial average and if it has made a higher high then i look for stocks that have made a higher high on the same day as or on days before the average another one down here what you want is a stock that is going to perform that is going to appreciate in value faster than the average stock relative strength is a measure of this kind of performance all things being equal if you are looking to buy a stock you should buy the strongest performance as indicated by the best measurement of relative strength available so let me just show you so we all know amazon right but did Amazon give you any clues in the early noughties bear market that it was potentially going to be a big leader? So I'll just do a couple of key points on each slide and then hopefully it will sink in. So if you take a look at Amazon here, right? Amazon makes a lower low here. The S&P 500 makes a lower low here as well. However, on the next low, okay, if we now look at this would be around about July of 2002, Amazon does what? Structurally puts in a higher low. See how Amazon puts in a higher low, S&P 500 during the same time period puts in a big lower low. So you have the index putting in a lower low and you have the stock putting in a higher low. That's relative strength. Do you see why you get all these 52 week highs coming through now? Interesting, right? We can then do it again that the S&P 500 doesn't really go anywhere. It basically goes sideways from July of 2002 to what's that going to be? Maybe March of 2000 and 2003, like spring of 2003. What's Amazon done? Amazon's up here. Higher high, higher low. Higher high, low in here as well. And look how Amazon's getting tight. And look at all the 52-week highs. Okay? This is the point of relative strength. Again, it's a free tool on TradingView. Search my name. You'll find it. Nice and easy. Okay? Relative strength line. See the 52-week highs. That's why I really like to trade stocks with 52-week highs. Let's do another one. Let's go back to the 1980s because you may just be saying, well, that's just fluke, isn't it? No. These are the strongest stocks, the market leaders. If the market is in an uptrend, then these are the stocks that, everything else being equal, you want to buy. But not when, when they make the higher high. You buy them on the reaction during sell-offs because the chance for fast returns are better. So this is PHM. Back in the 1980s, what do you notice? Look at the 52-week highs coming through. Look at the tightness in price. So, P, so PHM on the top puts in its low here, where the S&P 500 puts in a low. But then the S&P 500 puts in a lower low and another lower low. But what does PHM do? It goes, no, 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 no. It puts in a higher low, another higher low. It starts getting really, really tight. Tightness in price, low relative volume tells you what about supply and selling. There ain't much of it around. So then the stock here appreciates it will be split adjusted 101 times, but goes from about 60 cents up to over $4 here. Now, if I do another one here, look, the stock is powered out here, September of 1982. Look at where the stock is. Look at where the index is. The index is still in a base, hasn't been able to overcome the high here, but this stock has already broken out of this big base and it's up here. So this is the thing. Market reactions, bear markets create fantastic opportunities in leading stocks. This is how you find them. Relative strength lines, looking at the index. Well, the index made a lower low here. Stock didn't, stock put in a higher low. Looks like it wants to come out of the big base. Strong relative strength stocks move more quickly on the upside than any than, than the other stocks in the market. This is where you could be thinking about ADR percentages as well, as I was teaching you about. So this is Amgen here in the 1990s. So if you take a look at Amgen, Amgen puts in a low here when the S&P 500 puts in a low. And then going into September, October of 1990, you can see that the index S&P 500 puts in a lower low. What does Amgen do? No, 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 no. I'm just going to stay above basically my 10-week moving average being the 50-day. Then it just undercuts here. But you can see Amgen is putting in a big higher low when the index is putting in a lower low. Now, if you look at the difference, Amgen's trying to come out of this base here at this blue arrow being November of 1990. And look at the index. The index isn't too far off its lows, whereas Amgen's trying to come out of the base. Look at the 52-week highs. Okay, over here at the pink one as well. Amgen, again, just pulling back in really orderly to the 10-week at the pink one, while the S&P 500 is over here, like no man's land, right? Do you see? This is relative strength. Look at all the 52-week highs. Like these are what the strongest stocks in the market do. This is what they look like. So then we could be thinking about relative strength and we could bring in some fundamentals as well. So this is what I look for in terms of key fundamentals. But I'll just read you Trader Vic's, um, Trader Vic's view on fundamentals. So most profitable stock speculators are hybrid. They combine the best of both worlds and use a combination of technical and fundamental tools. I have to call myself a hybrid who leans towards the technical side. One fundamental statistic that is excellent is the correlation between rate of change of earnings growth and the change in the stock price. In a book published in 1969, Gordon Holmes demonstrated that the slope of a given price trend almost always precedes the correspondent or equivalent earnings trend slope in time. The amount of time displacement is about three months. Think about what O'Neill said in his Canstem criterion, the weight that he gave to earnings. Rate of change of earnings growth is the primary number to look for at finding a growth stock. So this is Celsius here 
take a look at the earnings coming through. Okay, year over year, up 344%, 333%. If you then take a look at the EPS that's being recorded, reported 40 cents, 52 cents. Compare that to the prior six quarters, which is minus 13 cents, 15 cents, 9 cents, 12 cents, losing to losing two losing two dollars forty six losing thirty seven dollars and suddenly forty cents fifty two like think about that from a rate of change standpoint straight of it was just saying here think about the sales growth as well eight quarters ago the quarterly sales was ninety four point nine million most recently reported quarter is three hundred and twenty nine million so you have sequential growth quarter over quarter year over year that's fantastic and now you've got a massive rate of change coming through in the earnings really good estimates as well next year up 37 percent with the guidance up as well really strong rs line the stock is in all-time high territory so very little to no overhead supply hanging over this stock really good to see some high quality funds playing around with it as as well so yeah in terms of thinking about fundamentals like ideally everything we've just been saying in terms of really good kind of technical setup those shake out demand tails undercutting base lows around say 21 day moving averages uh, 52 week highs coming through does the risk make sense and then bringing in the fundamental side massive earnings massive sales very little supply stock stock near all stock near all-time high territory now obviously if you're buying a little bit low it's not going to be at an all-time high but hopefully you understand the point that i'm making really good estimates as well and all of that good stuff so I'm now going to teach you how to draw trend lines before we go into some uh, some scanning. So drawing trend lines, a lot of people um, do this wrong. So let me teach you it. This is from this is from the book. Select the period of consideration: the long term being months to years, the intermediate term trend being weeks to months, or the short term days to week. It can also be a smaller segment, and any of these where a change of the slope of the trend line is. Apparent. For an uptrend within the period of consideration, draw a line from the lowest low up and to the highest minor low point preceding the highest high so that the line does not pass through prices in between the two low points. Extend the line upwards past the highest high point. This may sound like a mouthful, but we'll do some examples. It'll make sense. It is possible that the line will go through prices past the highest minor high point. In fact, this is one indication of a change of trend. For a downtrend, within the period of consolidation, draw a line from the highest high point to the lowest minor high point preceding the lowest low so the line does not pass through prices in between the two high points. Extend the line past the lowest high point downwards. So, uptrend up upward trend line correct so here you get the lowest low so the lowest low this is then the highest high so this is then the lowest low preceding the highest high without passing through any price it's hopefully quite self-explanatory so the wrong way to do it would be like this the lowest low and then just drawing the line like this because it's encapsulating most of the data so passing through prices that's wrong trade of excess downward trend line correct so you have the highest high up here you have the lowest low here so then you're looking for the highest high preceding the lowest low which would be here so this is actually then potentially potentially indicating a change of trend this would be wrong so you have the highest high here you have the lowest low here but this point here is the lowest high but it does not precede the lowest low so hopefully all a little bit self-explanatory there so this here a change of trend so trade Vic looks for changes of trend so these are three basic changes in price movements that when they occur in conjunction define a change of trend in any market stocks commodities bonds everything the changes are one a trend line is broken and i'll take you through this in a minute a trend line is broken the price crosses the trend line drawn on the i should say drawn on the uh, drawn on the chart so you see here you have your lowest low you have your highest high you have your your minor high before the highest high as well and then see how price is then breaking through the trend line indicating potentially a change of trend this bit here so this is then the test and failure area so the trend stops making higher highs in an uptrend or lower lows in a downtrend for example in an uptrend after a minor sell-off prices will rise again but fail to carry above the preceding high point or barely break the high and then fail the converse would happen in a downtrend this is often described as a test of the high or low point this condition usually but not always occurs when a trend is in the process of changing so what you're basically looking for there is a break of the trend line as indicated by the purple and then this is obviously an uptrend here so instead of price then being able to make a higher high which it doesn't it makes a higher low so you basically have a break of the trend line and then a test of failure price isn't able to make a higher high in a downtrend price wouldn't be able to make another lower low so you're looking for a break of the trend line and then a test and failure of either a higher high or a lower low number three Price go above a previous short-term minor rally high in a downtrend or below a previous short-term minor sell-off low in a downtrend. So that would be either breaking through support or breaking through potential resistance if it was an uptrend coming through. So you then see this here, if we're then carrying this on, okay, break, breaking through previous important minor low. So this here sh should 
should then act as support this purple line here it doesn't price and break through so you have a break of the trend line failure to then make a higher high in this instance here for the turning of a downtrend and then you have a breakthrough the previous area of support that should act as support on the chart either of the first condi first two conditions alone is enough evidence of a probable change in trend two out of three increases the probability of a change in trend and three and three out of three defines a change of trend so change of trend to watch for a change of trend on the charts all you have to do is translate these principles to graphical terms as below draw the trend line as described for a downtrend draw a horizontal line through the currently established low point draw a second horizontal line through the intermediate succeeding minor rally high for an uptrend you guys can read that so i've just broken it down in very simple terms the three keys to a change in trend are a trend line is broken there is a test and failure of a prior high or low i.e price doesn't put in a higher high or lower low in the direction of the prior trend nice and easy right support or resistance both usually horizontal is broken so if i now show you the downtrend here so point number one would be what point number one would be a trend line is broken see the trend line down here it's broken now at point number two price does not then make a lower low so you can see here lower low lower low lower low at point two it doesn't make a lower low confluence here in this illustration that then holds this trend line here it then bounces puts in a higher low so now we have higher lows coming through interesting that's point number two and then number three would be a break of the minor resistance point the high here so we have break of the trend line not then making a lower low makes a higher low and then we have a break of the trend line that would then be a change of trend so what i am now going to do guys is take you across and i'm going to show you how you can scan for stocks very very quickly we're on my custom built stock screen hero and i'm going to show you how you can very quickly scan for those type of leaving stocks in the context of an uptrend as well so i've got some preset screens as well we have a free plan available for this as well so head over to my website and you can go and sign up for a free plan first and foremost if you want to so you can then access these preset scans as well so we currently have five exchanges we have australia canada india india the uk and also the us so i'm just going to take you through the us continuation based screen which is one of the preset scans that you can access so what are the criteria well country we're looking for stocks in the US market cap greater than a hundred million we want the last closing price above a dollar we want price versus the 50-day moving average to be above price versus a 200-day moving average to be above 50-day average volume greater than 50,000 shares and we want the relative strength rank on a three-month basis to be greater than 75 so come down here and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to filter it to look for relative strength rank three month I want the highest first so 99 first that's how I like to look for it I like that it is a sweet spot i think looking for stocks showing exceptional three month relative strength so i'm then just going to hit charts if you want to hit flex charts and see the earnings sell data you can do that i'm just going to hit charts and show you how speedy this is to do it but i would encourage you that's a free plan available go and give it a try yourself so we're going to have 50 load up per page so it will take a little uh, little second or so because i've got recording software going as well so what i'm going to do is then show you how you can very quickly add them to a watch list as well so let me just go down find a couple of interesting ones cls i've got the 21 day set on the chart here you can change this via your site settings see how it bounces off the 21 here bounces off the 21 here like really nice shake out demand tail. remember what i was talking about look at this shake out demand tail undercuts the base lows low volume as well right so an interesting looking stock let me go down because i know there's going to be a couple uh, in here and i'll show you how you could then flag them as uh, as well but you can see you can just scan through works really well on tablets and stuff like that um as well espo just pulling in so nice big shag out demand tail here pulling into its 21 so okay maybe i want to look at that so what i could do here is i could create a new watch list or i could just put it into i could just put it into a watch list like here i could put it in a preset watch list uh, as well let me keep going down this one here the stock showing a lot of relative strength. that's quite interesting let me keep going down and i'll find a couple of um interesting ones for you i want to find like a carvana so you see a carvana here it's one of the like momentum leading type stocks in the market and potentially building a cup and handle type banner so see how here again you've got to use your imagination a bit but this here is the potential cup and then remember what i was talking about see how you get three or four bars in here displaying a lot of bullish synchronicity remember i was showing you that transition from the cup into the handle you want to see bullish synchronicity and now look at the tightness coming through so if this can just pull in and kind of tighten around 50 dollars that looks interesting so i want to then flag that one maybe i want to put it in a watch list for this week as well so i can look at it i can then export it into trading view and all of that good stuff i'll finish going down through this um through this page as well expab chinese ev stock so it's starting to tighten in here this one here i'll finish it i'll finish with uh with vera so see how this stock's building a big base i'd say this is a darvis box got a bit of vcp action as well hasn't it one contraction two contraction three contraction look at the tightness coming through look how it's just sitting there on its 21 so that's one that i want to be flagging just like that so i'll wrap it up there guys thank you ever so much for watching the video and supporting the channel i really do appreciate it and i look forward to seeing you in a future video